In this example, we'll be creating a TM12 cobot or collaborative robot. In order to do this, I've created a new project. I've added a custom mechanic, named it TM12. And as I've done before, gone into parts and I've added all the parts in order. But as you'll notice, there's no uh, motion control down here. We haven't got any parentage set up. We haven't got any motion direction set up. So uh, let's go through and create those now. These can be done in any order. But we'll start with the motion direction for the uh, first step here. Let's orientate ourselves around. Zoom in a bit. And select rotational motion. If I turn this now, you'll notice there's a slight gap forming. Maybe visible on the right there. And that just indicates that we're not quite lined up with the base. Obviously, there's a little bit of offset. It's centered on the CAD file, so that's not exactly centered on the uh, on the connection point. We can see it's offset in the X direction based on the movement of it. So let's see if we can add a little bit of offset up here and rotate again. And that looks better. So we're now lined up with the center of that connection point between the two. It's okay that. And let's join those two parts together. So remember we want to go from the base to the part we're moving. And we want to set them as parent and child. And now we have our rotation at the bottom here. Let's add an amount to rotate by. Make sure we're enabled. And do a rotation. And remember that rotation will take place in the 3D visualizer, not in the construction view. And that appears to be working. So we're good, we can rotate around and we can reset that position. Now let's move to the next one. This time let's do it the other way around. Parent the parts together. First step, two second step, parent and child. And you'll see in the view here, you can check you've got the right parts. And that's okay that. So these are now parent and child. We can't move them yet because there's no motion direction setting. So we'll add that. And this time around, the orientation needs to be changed. Obviously we're rotating vertically. We don't want to do that. If we try this out now, you'll see it's rotating incorrectly. So what can we do about that? Well, up here we have this rotation axis adjustment. We can uh, manually edit these. There's also a drop down control in order to uh, give you some visual feedback on, uh, on your parts. So, and what we need is we actually want to rotate around the Y axis here. It's indicated by the green. Red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. And there we go. We're now lined up with the uh, rotation axis. So let's try that out in the view. Zoom in, try rotating. And yes, once again, we're slightly misaligned. As soon as this part is virtually identical to the last one, let's try the same offset. This time we need to do it in the Z axis. And now we're correctly lined up. So that's okay that. And we now have our joint rotation test. Our rotation has been correctly applied. Now, as for this next component, this is a fixed arm. This doesn't rotate by itself. It has a motor at either end. So what are we going to do? Well, we don't want a motion direction setting for it, but what we do want is a joint setting. We want to join that part to the first step, the part we, sorry, second step, the part we've just added. So let's add a new joint setting. 
Let's select the second step. And one of the reasons I like to add all the components in order is because they'll appear in order in these drop downs. So we want to join second step to upper arm step. And if we look in here, you'll see that's obviously correct. They are joined together. If I select the wrong arm part, it's fairly obvious those two parts should not be joined together. And we can set those as parent and child. In fact, in this entire example, we'll be setting all of these as parent and child. The other joint motions can be used for um, the sort of hinges, other parts which are maybe not powered. Uh, in this case, we're either connecting them as fixed or connecting them as a, uh, a motorized joint using the motion direction settings. So what will happen now? When we apply rotation, the arm moves with the motor. Let's go through and apply that to the rest of these joints. One gotcha to look out for while creating your structure for the uh, custom mechanics is the following. You'll notice how the parts suddenly start flying apart from each other and uh, will we'll continue to drift off into the distance. If this happens to you, go to 3D Visualizer, Scene Graph, Collision Filter, and turn off the physics for any objects in there. What's happening there is that we're trying to simulate the physics on those parts and because they're connected together they fight each other, break apart and then uh, drift with the uh, the inertia of their objects. So closing that you'll see now that's fixed and all the parts remain connected to each other even when we reload it. Now we've created our TM12 Cobot structure using the custom mechanics. Let's use some shape script to animate it. First of all, go to 3D visualization, add and shape script. We'll also need a shape script sequence in order to run that shape script. So let's add that now and set that up. In our shape scripts collection, it's enabled and we need to select the shape script that will be run first of all. Open up the shape script by double clicking and the first thing to do is to add the reference for the custom mechanics. That's located in ACE Server Core Sim 3D Custom Mechanics. First thing we want to do is to um, Add some code to the render method in here, and we want to access our cobot. We're going to use the ace object, and what we're going to do is we're going to access our cobot using its name. Quite simply paste the string in there and we will now be able to access this so this will load application manager 0 tm12 which is this application manager and our custom mechanics name we're going to cast it as the custom mechanics type from the library we've just added using the using statement and we're going to save that as a, a, a bar cobot and we could obviously use a, a type here as well we could uh, use the custom mechanics let's make part of this robot move. The cobot move part will take a string. In this case we want the, the name of the uh, of a joint to move. Let's just take the first one. It also needs a linear target value. Now these are all um, rotational joints so there's not going to be any linear value and we need a rotational value so let's make this thing spin around on the spot 
um, and to do that we'll create a new variable to track that, uh, that rotational value. Now because the method that uh, reads these values reads both at once we create a, uh, a variable for each and they'll be read using out parameters. Again, this takes a uh, string name of the part to read. And control space as usual, bring up the autocomplete. Now we can set our rotation value to our current rotation plus a certain amount, let's say two. Let's build this. And as you can see, we're now rotating the first joint and the rest of the parts are following. Let's see if we can make some improvements to the code, some better layout and other features. Okay, so nothing too uh, difficult here. We've got a class for our robot model that contains the custom mechanic, uh, a, a string array of joint names, a constructor that takes the mechanic and the joint names, a homing method that goes through each of the joints and does a move part on them. A few other methods in here. We can get the rotation of a joint, we can set the rotation absolutely, or we can set it relative to its current position. And let's start to make use of this. Open up here again. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is we are, um, we're currently fetching this, uh, this custom mechanics object for the uh, cobot twice. Biggest step would be to uh, to create it once, and we'll replace that with our new robot model class. So let's uh, put that in there. Let's set a uh, a value at which we want the uh, first joint to spin round, uh, and let's also make the uh, the end of the robot wave backwards and forwards. So we'll set a direction and a speed. Um, this will be a value will toggle backwards and forwards in, the, in order to make it reciprocate and, uh, and a speed at which to do so. A bit faster than it's spinning around. Next thing to do is we need to create our robot model. So let's get rid of our our standard read here. We want to pass in the custom mechanics here and the cobot joints. Let's make a list of all the parts we can move and those can get passed in as well. Um, and lastly, let's call home on this. So the first thing it'll do is to home each of the joints. Um, clearing out any previous uh, operations. Now, in our render method, we're currently uh, reading the rotation, setting the new rotation, and, uh, and we, we can use our, our new classes method to do that. So let's delete that code. So we can now call that and do a rotate joint relative. It's first joint, so joint zero. Um, this is just indexing this array up here. Um, so yeah, we want to move this this first uh, first step past the robot, and we want to move that at the spin speed. So let's see how that looks. Recompile that, and I forgot to put in my new namespace. So let's put that in there and rebuild that.
And now that's completed, we can run our shape script again. And as you can see, the first joint is rotating around as it did before, and the same speed. So I'll stop that, and run it again. and the homing operation takes place. Okay, so now we've got it rotating, let's implement a, a simple waving mechanism. So let's read out the uh, current rotation of, uh, of joint number three, which would be the, uh, the fourth, because it's zero index, one, two, three, four, so is number five up here. What we're gonna do is say that if the angle is greater than 45 or is less than 45 we can reverse direction so it'll, it'll move until it's um, positive or negative 45 and then switch direction back the other way and then we need to apply that speed and direction so we're going to rotate the joint relative same joint number as before and we're going to use the wave speed times the wave direction so that'll reverse and remember this is relative so it'll be on top of the existing position okay so we can recompile that and now when we run it it should home rotate and give us a little wave that concludes this how-to video on custom mechanics. As we have seen, there are an easy way to configure more complex mechanisms such as robots, and with ShapeScript can be animated. Obviously, these are fairly simple examples, but with further coding for kinematics, for example, could be used to simulate a real robot. But for now, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from our robot.